Hi, it's Amy from Amy Renee Designs, and today I'm here to walk you through all of the steps to make this beautiful rainbow sunset mug rug. This mug rug is a free pattern available to my newsletter subscribers. It's part of my summer sewing series. This is actually the second year that we've done it where I provide a new sewing project every Saturday for the month of June. This year we have an actual bonus fifth project that I'll be sharing. And they're meant to um, add different skills to your lives, different techniques, all in fun, small, quick ways that you can find some creativity this summer, even with the kids out of school, even with the busyness of trips and wanting to enjoy the great outdoors. I'm hoping to provide you with some inspiration for creativity that will last you beyond the summer into your life. And so let's begin with the Rainbow Sunset Mug Rug. To begin, you're going to need to cut your backing piece of fabric and your batting piece to the sizes indicated in the pattern. You're also going to need two squares for the sun, and then you will need your strips cut for your rays. Now on your rays, this is where you get to kind of bring in a little bit of personality and um, kind of the way you like to do it. You can either cut all of your rays exactly the same width, or you can cut them in varying widths. I like to vary the widths between one and a half inches up to three inches. Um, I like to keep them within that range so that it makes assembling your rainbow a little bit easier um, and also kind of helps keep the colors in proportion a little bit better. Um, but you can do it however you prefer. This is totally your project. Okay, once you have all of your fabric cut out and ready to go, we're going to start by basting our backing to our batting. You can use spray basting to do this. Um, you can just stitch them together. Or I actually, um, because it's such a small project, will just use a little bit of glue stick and glue these two together. So you want to glue the wrong side of your backing fabric to your batting. And then you're going to turn it over. And the next step is to add the sunshine. Your pattern comes with this circle template that will be um, used to create your sun. So the first thing that we're going to do is mark on our batting where we want our sun to be. Now, typically I like to do it just a little bit to the right of center. That's just, for me, the look of how I like it, but you can totally do it right in the middle. Um, you could do it off to the left, however, however you like to do it. The other option you have here is deciding how high up or down you want your sun to go. Now, I like to have my sun coming off of the edge a little bit. It just gives you an easier way to start your rainbow rather than having to have, like, you know, if you had it up here and having rays going all the way around, which you totally can do, it just makes coming together at the bottom piece trickier. So I like to have it coming off the bottom here so that it's, it starts and ends as you're adding your rainbows, um, rays, if that makes sense. Once you've decided where you want it to go, I just like to use a regular pen and just kind of trace it. Now you don't want it super dark um, because you don't want it bleeding through your fabrics that you're using for your rays, but you also wanna just be able to see it. So that is plenty good um, to be able to add my rays and make sure that they're all overlapping and hitting where they need to without being so dark it's gonna bleed through. Once you have it marked on your batting, you're also gonna take your pattern piece and on the wrong side of one of your sun pieces, now these are solids, so there really isn't a right or wrong to it. Um, you're just going to center your circle template here and trace it around. and then you're going to set your pattern piece aside. You will not need that anymore. To create your sun, then you're going to take your two pieces that you have here and you're going to place them right sides together. So if you were using a patterned fabric, there would be a right and a wrong side. So you want those two right sides together and then you're going to sew around the entire circle right on your traced line. So switching fabrics here, um, you can see that I have stitched right along that line. And once you've done that, then you are going to trim around all of the seam allowance. And I like to use pinking shears because if you don't use pinking shears, you'll trim it 
with a quarter inch seam allowance and then you're going to need to notch all the way around that circle so that your um, your circle will lay flat and it gives it a much cleaner look. When you are doing this, if especially if you are using the pinking shears, well, and when you're doing your notches, you want to make sure that you get up close to your stitch line, but do not go through it. Otherwise, you'll create holes inside your sun. Now that we have our seam allowance all trimmed, you're going to take a pair of sharp scissors and you're going to pull the two pieces of fabric from your sun away from one another and then cut a slit in what will be the back side of your sun. Using that slit, you'll turn your sun right side out. I like to use my fingers to roll the seam allowance to get my um, seam allowance pushed as close to the edge as I can so that I can get a much smoother, um, rounder circle. You can see this is where I've turned it right side out. And then I will take this to my iron and press it and then set aside your sun while we head to our sewing machine to work on our rays. Now that we're here at the machine, I have my batting and backing, and then I have my pile of rays here. So to begin, the first thing that I have found is easiest when you are trying to figure out how to angle your rays as you work your way around the sun is to kind of create a focal point on your sun somewhere. Now you can choose to do it like in the middle, you can have it a little bit lower, it really just is up to you. And again, I just use a regular pen and I will just kind of mark where I'm gonna be aiming all of my rays into. It just is very helpful to have a visual. Now, one thing I did wanna note about using just a regular pen is that we are going to be taking this to our iron as we add each of our rays. And you don't want to use like a heat um, erasable pen, um, like a friction pen or something like that, because you don't want your marks to disappear halfway through your project. So you just wanna use just a regular marking pen to make these marks. That way you don't have to worry about it disappearing on you. Once I have my, my mark on there, I'm gonna take my first ray and I usually will just line it up with the bottom of my batting piece here. And the only other thing to note about positioning this first one is you want to make sure that at every point along this trace circle, your fabric overlaps by about a quarter of an inch. So down here, right at the bottom, it's a little bit less than that. So I'm gonna just slide it over a little bit. And it's okay if it goes way over a quarter of an inch here, because we will go back and trim this out if we feel like we need to. Um, and the only reason that I would trim it a little bit is just to prevent any shadowing underneath our sun. But our sun is also two layers of fabric, so it shouldn't really be an issue. Sometimes I just do it anyway, just to be on the safe side, especially when I'm working on super dark fabrics. Once you have your first one positioned, then we're going to add our second ray. So this is where knowing where we're aiming comes in handy. A lot of times what I will do is line up one edge of my ray with this, where the end of my first ray hits the edge of my batting. So I'll line that up there and then I will pivot this end to point toward my mark on here. Now, if that makes this a little bit bigger or smaller than I want to, you don't have to line it up with this piece. You can adjust it as long as this end is pointing towards wherever your focal point is. There's a couple of things to note here. Because we're dealing with angles, things sometimes shift a little on you in ways you don't expect. <laughs> so let me show you what I mean by that. So if, for example, I have positioned this here and I think it's going great and I, I pulled it all the way over because I wanna make sure it's lined up here, I sew this down using my quarter inch seam allowance and then I fold it over, I may find that this end up here suddenly isn't on it anymore. So it might be like this. And I thought, oh, I had plenty of fabric, but down here it looks like plenty of fabric, but once you fold it, it doesn't, it's not long enough to go over the edge. And this is especially true once you get up, I find that this top left corner 
is the one that I run into that the most with um, because it's going up so much, you know, and you want to make sure that there's plenty of room in your angles to cover all your bases. The other place that you need to be paying attention to so where you don't fall short is say you're trying to just line this up so it's just a quarter inch over where this trace line is going to be and then you may not um, cover all of this area like you want to um, again because of the way the angles are and things like that. So just make sure that you're giving yourself plenty to work with particularly plenty of length so that you can position your rays and not have to worry about not covering the edge up here and not covering the middle where you're turning and how you want it to be. All right, so I'm going to line this up. Again, I'm using just that corner there and I'm lining it up with my point here. I'm making sure that I have plenty of room over my um, circle here. And then I'm going to take this and sew using a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, I just wanted to show you on my machine, I am using a walking foot here to do this quilt as you go. Um, just to make sure that all of the layers, the batting, the backing, and all of my rays are all feeding through as evenly as possible. If you try to do it with a traditional machine, um, sometimes you'll find your rays shifting and things like that. It's just much easier if you have access to a walking foot to do that. So now I am going to go ahead and sew these together. And I am just following the edge of my second ray. And I'm going to stop sewing when I have estimated that I'm about a quarter of an inch past my traced sun line. And now you see I have those first two rays sewn together. Before I press this over and add any quilting, I'm first going to trim away any excess fabric I have on this side of my stitch line to again prevent any shadowing um, of this um, first fabric underneath the second. And this is especially true when you're going from darker fabrics to lighter fabrics or fabrics with a really intense print light. The pluses on this fabric may stand out in the next fabric depending on how much difference there is in um, in the hues there. So again, I'm just going to take my sharp pair of scissors and I'm going to just slide it right underneath that seam allowance and trim out all of this extra of my first ray. Then I'm going to bring over my little ironing pad here and I'm going to just press this second ray away from my first ray. Now this is where you have a choice move that aside for a second. You can choose to add your quilting to this first ray now, or you can um, add all of the rays and then go back and add quilting to all of the rays at the same time. It's really a matter of preference. I for sure only add quilting once both sides are tacked down. So I would not add quilting to this one until I have added the next ray um, because it's just easier to be able to guide your quilting into the shape of the ray um, when you have both sides of it. So we're going to go ahead and just add a couple of quick lines of quilting here um, just to tack this down and then we're going to keep adding some rays. So we're going to go ahead and add some quilting to this first one and then we're going to keep adding um, more of our rays and quilting. I did want to note one thing here is that I do try to line up my quilting also with this point on here, um, especially on these first couple. You're going to have um, quilting lines that don't necessarily mimic the seam line there. Um, so I like to use this point of um, reference as a guide for my quilting lines in addition to adding the rays. So now I have quilting on my first ray here and we're going to add our third ray to our sun.
Another tip that I have for when you're adding these is it's tempting to trim off some of this extra fabric before you have um, moved it up. But if I trim this along this edge here right now with it facing down, when I go to flip it up, it's no longer going to cover the whole side of that um, batting. So make sure that you're not trimming the edges of your pieces until after they're already pressed up and maybe even quilted down, just to make sure that you're not trimming off anything that you'll regret later. And the reason I can share these tips with you is because I have made every one of these mistakes myself. <laughs> so again, we're going to take our sharp scissors. We're going to trim away our extra and while I have these here because these two are already stitched down I'm going to go ahead and trim away some of this extra fabric in the middle just to reduce some of that bulk but I'm not going to cut into the ray that I'm working on right now because we just want to make sure that it um we don't regret it later. So we wait till we're all the way done with it. Now we can go ahead and add some quilting to that middle ray. And I do like to vary the way that I'm quilting it from ray to ray um, as I work my ray around. I feel like it just adds some interest and fun and it's where I get to play. Once you've gone all the way around your whole project, then it's time to go back and add our sun. So we're gonna take our sun piece that we did um, and set aside and we're going to position it so that it covers that opening that we left um, in the bottom here. And it doesn't matter if it lines up exactly with where you had originally placed it, as long as it's covering all of the edges of the rays that you have, um, that's really the biggest concern that you have is you wanna make sure that you're closing off all of those raw edges. So then I like to just throw a pin in there to hold it in place. And then again, I'm gonna keep sewing with my walking foot because of the bulk of the quilt and the batting and all of that stuff. And I'm going to begin by just sewing a really close edge stitch all the way around um, my sun. And then you can add in quilting um, inside. Sometimes I do co-centric circles. Um, sometimes I do a crosshatch quilting in there. It just really depends on the mood I'm feeling at the time. Um, so we're going to sew down this sun and then add a little bit of quilting. The thing about sewing circles, and this applies when you're sewing the two layers together, when you're sewing this down, is to take a couple of stitches, stop, pivot, and then keep sewing. I love this machine um, because it has a needle down option um, right here where when I stop sewing, the needle automatically stays in the lower position. But this one also has a great feature where the needle stays down, but the presser foot actually lifts up just a little bit. Um, if your machine does not have that feature, make sure you lift up your presser foot and then pivot, do a couple more stitches, stop your sewing, lift your presser foot and pivot in order to get the smoothest, roundest circle you can.
Now that we have our sun sewn down and quilted, all our rays are quilted, it's time to take this to our cutting mat. We're gonna trim it up, add our binding, and then our project is all the way finished.